Okay guys, today's makeup, I think I'm very into it and I really love all the products I'm sharing with you. So first off, I want to follow up on the Good Molecules Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. I was sent a box of various items. Uh, ones that are more skincare based, you know, require more time for testing. But this I've been using for a couple weeks, maybe even longer now. It is, again, the silicone free priming moisturizer. I was like, how is it silicone free? It is a plant-derived silicone alternative. So as far as hydrating or moisturizing primers go, things I've used before and liked for reference are the Too Faced Hangover, the both of the Touch and Soul, the one that's in the tube and the one that's like in a container, the Glassy Balm, as well as Smashbox Primerizer and various like kind of drugstore type ones that are similar to the primerizer from say Makeup Revolution, Catrice, all of those moisturizing primers are ones that I've used and I like. Some of them have a little bit of silicone in it. Um, they're not particularly hydrating, they look hydrating, but I don't think they're actually moisturizing my skin. So out of all the ones I have tried, I would say I like prefer say the Smashbox, the Too Faced, and the Touch and Soul. But this is pretty much like just knock those down. Like this one is probably the best one in my opinion. This actually could perform as a moisturizer uh, outside of priming your skin. It makes your skin look very hydrated. It will look very smooth. I don't think it has any blurring, but it definitely hydrates and plumps your skin. Products apply on top of it really beautifully. It'll still show through your powder. So I really like it and the texture is such that it feels like normal skincare. So if these all sound like things that you would like, then I would recommend this to you. I think this is $14 off of Beautylish, so yeah. Um, other good molecules items that I can absolutely recommend to you and have recommended to you, A, the cleansing balm, so good. I am down to like maybe the last 20%. I'm trying to figure out um, which ones I'm gonna try next. And what else do I like? The hyaluronic acid. I really like the Good Molecules hyaluronic acid as well. Um, the niacinamide toner, again, I've used on and off, and then I was sent the full size, and I'm like using that now. So I will let you know. I do think it's very good for brightening. Right, so that's that. You get 50 mils here, so a really good price for a really good amount of product. Okay, so for foundation, I have the Oxygenetics Oxygenating Foundation. It is in the shade creme or cream. So, okay, I also really like the, um, what do you, what's the word? The shelf life, it's a 24 month foundation, which I feel like most foundations are either six months or 12 months. The fact that this one lasts that long is really great. However, you're getting 15 mils of product, not your standard 30, and it is around 60, $67. Uh, I always look at, uh, what's it called? websites like skin store skincare rx derm store um, i'll link below wherever this is sold they do 20 30 percent off all the time or it'll just be like a regular sale price so i had bought this and i used it and you know i like it and i've used it on and off but there was a day when i was out and about and i was stopped twice and i was just like what is going on i have never stopped i get okay when i am out I will say that the number one thing I'm asked, this is without fail. If I'm out and there are like females around, they will ask me what my hair color is, or they'll be like, your hair is so pretty, like what is the color? And I always just tell them it's box dye, and they're always like, really? So that, like usually I feel like when I'm approached, it's because of that. I never get approached because someone's like, oh, your makeup is so pretty or whatever. So I was at Ulta, and this girl who, I think yeah, she worked there, and she was like, are you finding everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, she's like, your skin is so pretty. I was like, thank you. I was like, hmm, okay. I mean, I get that every so often. And then I was at TJ Maxx, and I was like in like the, you know, the beauty skincare aisle, and like this lady was on her phone, and she like doesn't even like leave her conversation. She's like, do you have foundation on? What foundation is it? I was like, explain to her, you know, what it is, and like, she's like, screenshotting stuff from my phone and she's like oh you know like i can't get it on sephora or anything i'm like no because it's very hard to shade match online especially something that we like don't know about and she's like well your skin looks so good it like it looks it's like not super mad it's like a little bit shiny and like she's just it looks really pretty and i was like oh okay thank you and then she asked about my hair and blah 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 whatever so this must look amazing in person and i just like don't 
I don't know what the huge different it, difference is um, from this compared to other foundations I really like but I think other people must see something and it is really really pretty like I, I really like it uh, I, I don't know what to say outside of like the only thing I could think of is that when I came back home and I like really stared at my skin and I was like what is the huge huge difference and it's that it it rides that really fine line between like does she have makeup on like she I think she does and then it's like but it also really looks like good skin so I don't know and this is like I would say like no more than medium coverage so I mean there is coverage to it so I I don't know I'm just telling you like I don't get stopped until this foundation that day specifically so I I'm just recommending this to you based off of popular opinion from that day <laughs> For powder, it is the La Mer powder. I know this is expensive, but it really, it's like such a beautiful powder. And I uh, have hit pan, which I'm very proud of myself for. And I probably will finish this whole thing. I always come back to it, which, you know, to me means that like, you know, I really like it. I love the way it looks under the eyes, on the face. This is a powder I can use all over. So I think I have it in the shade light, light 12. And it's like a really beautiful match for me. For concealer, this is the Dose of Colors number 11 in light medium. I have it under the eyes. I only set the outer corner area because I feel like I, I work a lot of eyeshadow there. So I don't want it to like, uh, you no, know, what's the word? Smudge a little bit. Okay, I heard a truck. So I film like right in front of my front door and I'm like, if it's like UPS, or like FedEx or the mail person, I like, if they come and drop something off in front of my door, like they will see me standing here like, you know, like, okay, anyway, so I really like this. I also picked up shade 12. It's just ever so slightly darker. Um, and I was planning on using it on the face since it is more of a matte finish concealer. Uh, I, I just like concealers sometimes where like I can just apply them and not have to worry about setting them or like making sure they don't move, that kind of thing. So I, I like this. I think it looks really good. There is, I haven't looked at the claims of this, but I feel like there's like some kind of blurring that occurs here. Cause when I applied this, I was a little bit like, oh, it's like quite blurring and smoothing. And I, I think you can see it. I think you can see it on camera because I didn't use a corrector today. Not that that like would have done anything, but it's very, it's very smooth. I then use this Chanel, I think it's called a multi-use balm stick. It's in the shade Sculpting, which is kind of odd because it's like this clear balm, but uh, I saw this on say like Instagram. It was probably a makeup artist, maybe Patrick Ta, maybe Hung Van Go, and they were applying this to some celebrity before a show or an award or something and I was like, oh my god, I need this. And it is so pretty. I'm gonna get closer. So I have it down the nose on top of this lip area. I also have it on the high points of my cheekbones. And it's a very, very subtle highlight, but it's also, what's the word? It's subtle because it looks real, but you can see it. Like it just, it kind of looks like glossy and it does sit down to some degree, like you can definitely feel it on your skin, but I, I don't find that my hair gets stuck on it or anything. And that is like, you know, the, the, the fine line between like, even if it doesn't set down and it looks natural, but then does it get caught on stuff? No. So there's that. The bronzer is the Givenchy, I just call it the marble bronzer, but it's called the Healthy Glow Powder in 4.5 Natural. And it looks like this. So at some point you could see the marbleized effect of it really well, but now as I've kind of really gone through it, you won't see it anymore, but. That's the shade of the bronzer. It's definitely glowy. And that is why I like it because I think it makes your skin look like skin. It looks really healthy. I've been using this like nonstop lately and I don't know, I know when it was released it was supposed to be limited edition but I believe it's still available at like two retailers or something. I will link below where I find it. The lips is just the Revlon Nude Illuminator, very pretty. I just wanted to go for something like really simple today. Just 
I felt like everything else already looked so pretty that I didn't really need to like go all out with like lined lips and like a product and like, you know, three items and stuff. Okay, and then the eyeliner today is the Surat liquid liner. Very, very pretty. The lashes are a 172 from Ardell, which when I had purchased them like maybe a year or two ago and I tried them out, I didn't really like them. And then this time I had ordered like a whole bunch of my usual 174s from Ulta and one of these was like lumped in there and I was like, I'll just try it again and now I think they're so pretty. I think I was cutting them down in the wrong way. I usually go for lashes that taper so they're like shorter in the inner corner and longer so they I get like that like wide eyed kind of cat eye thing. But these, they're tapered at both edges and they kind of like flare out in the middle. So I just had to cut them in a way so that I would like cut off the outside taper <laughs> and get the flare at the end and now I think they're so pretty. So, and they look really natural. I feel like this is what people who have good lashes and then they put mascara on, I think that's the look that is created when I wear these. So I really like it. It also helps like my lids to look larger because the lashes are a little shorter. I also tend to use a little bit less eyeliner and then I feel like, you know, I get like more lid happening which is always pretty, you know, look more awake. So lastly is the eyeshadow. This is the Moon Spell from Lunar Beauty and I think this is so beautiful. I feel like it's just so hard to come out with an interesting eyeshadow palette. And there's like a, I keep using the, the term fine line, but there really is a fine line. Oh, sorry, my hair is like collecting, it's like itching me. Okay, there goes the light changing again. Okay. There's a fine line between coming out with an interesting and well put together unconventional eyeshadow combination and then like just having like weird colors together and then calling it like unique or different, you know what I mean? And this is so good. I've had my eye on it for a while and then I think like certain sales had passed and I wasn't able to pick it up or like when Sephora was doing a promotion like I, it wasn't in stock and I finally picked it up off of Beauty Bay and the pricing on there is the same as the US and I think it was like 20 or 25 percent off. It is stunning. If you look at it in rows, I mean it kind of like speaks for itself, right? So I love it. The only color I probably wouldn't use is this color, but even then I could use it to accent. I just wouldn't put it like as like a main shade, but everything else in here is so beautiful. I've used the entire palette. I've used it for like a week and I just love it. All of these colors that look like maybe a pressed glitter, they buff out. They're so beautiful. I love the formula. Before I show you swatches, I want to get you really up close to kind of these like pressed shades they just end up being really beautiful metallics and then this one up here it's like a very subtle shifting shade but not too much so it doesn't look i don't know on my eye i don't like ones that shift too much because i feel like it just kind of looks like one color on me where so this one is like more subtle and like really beautiful so there's like no black or like brow bone shade and i'm like totally fine with that but okay so the way i have it it's bottom to top <laughs> So those are all the colors. The pigment is really amazing. The mattes perform so beautiful. And you can see these. There's like very little fallout, like almost none. So this one, this one, this one, and this one, and that one. Those are the ones that look like a pressed glitter, but in fact are just this crazy, smooth, beautiful, beautiful like texture. There's that shade that shifts a little. It's ever so slight. You can buff it out and get more dimension out of it, but I would just go in with it straight. Use it as like liner or like on the outer corners. It's just so pretty. These kind of like muddier like greens. And I love the undertone of say the neutral shades. So the browns and the greens, they're like, they have an earthy, mossy, almost yellowy undertone. And then, like I said, if you look at them in like rows, so this could be like a look, it kind of creates a look for you, which I really like. So I highly recommend this palette if you have had your eye on it or you're curious. Um, sometimes we have reservations about influencer brands, but this one is so good. I'm really interested to try out other items from his line. Uh, I think even though there were many eyeshadow palettes before this, none of those color combinations were ones that I knew I could wear. But this one to me is, you know, it works. 
that is the makeup for today i love it i think it's really pretty i feel like there's now there's too much sunlight <sighs> okay so yes i very enjoy oh so here i have like i have this a container here of stuff i've been using recently i have a whole bunch of concealers here that i'm going to share with you soon that i've been testing out this is the makeup revolution conceal and conceal and fix <laughs> couldn't feel conceal and fix uh it's a pot concealer really pretty it's very like waxy i have to look at ingredients but it feels like a very waxy concealer too. there's 11 grams in there that's amazing this is also makeup revolution it's the conceal and define infinite i have c7 here and then this i will just tell you right now that i adore this it's the dior forever skin correct i have it in the shade 2n i've used it as foundation and concealer all in one and it's like this most seamless beautiful look it's just so good and then i've used it just as concealer under the eyes i love this uh, maybe i'll film with this tomorrow so you can see it on the face because it is stunning and you'll see it in like another vlog but with all the release of the concealers lately i mean I'm, i've looked at the hourglass i haven't swatched in store have i no i think i did and i wasn't sure about it i think just after seeing all the reviews of all the most recent concealers that have been released in the past two three months this is the one that stood out to me the most so this is the one i picked up it's just really it's really stunning okay i actually feel really bad about this trader joe's haul however because i've had it for like over a week now i went at night by the time I came home it was like too late to film and then I have had like an insane week and there's just been <laughs> no time however this means I can give you really good reviews yay I hope <laughs> so we have the chocolate chip cookies semi-sweet chocolate and dark chocolate these are absolutely delicious I think it's the combination of the dark chocolate and the regular semi-sweet I could have them be ever so slightly softer. It could be like, you know, when I bought them, but they're not soft. They're okay, they're softer than they are crunchy, but they're kind of like in between. So I would like them to be softer, but otherwise, I think the flavor on these are perfect. I got these coffee lovers espresso beans. I don't know why, what where my brain was at i thought these were like jelly beans so when i bit into one i was like so confused by the texture but they are good i opened them from the bottom they're yummy the tiny gummy bears so good they have these new ones the x's and o's i like these they're kind of a cross between a fruit snack texture and a gummy like a regular gummy so you get a lot more stick on your teeth from what I can tell, it doesn't list the flavors on the back, but it's just kind of like berry type scents, like in a soft way. Like they're really good. They smell amazing. The Rose Fingerling Potato Chips, these are really good. If you tried out the Peruvian ones with like the multicolor and you're like, I don't know, too earthy, these are really good. These are the Dark Russet Kettle Cooked. This is my second time getting them. I don't think I'm gonna get them anymore. I really, really like them, but they're just a little too salty for me. The sodium is at 6%. And for me, I think it just, I, I aim for under 4%, 5% is like, I don't know. So maybe 6% is like that area, that percentage where it's too much for me. But otherwise, I really like the flavor of these. I love the crunch. They're really thin for a kettle cooked chip. This is the Soft Bite Mini Chocolate Hazelnut Biscotti. I am not someone that really enjoys, not enjoys, I don't dislike biscotti, I just never get it because I like soft things. So when I saw this as soft, I can't even talk, I'm like slow building anger. If by soft they mean crunchy, then yeah, they're soft. These are not soft at all. Unless the term soft means tiny, I don't know. It's, they're good, but they require like coffee or hot cocoa or whatever, and it's just not what I anticipated. The Furukake Japanese multi-purpose seasoning. This I haven't tried yet, but it's going to be good just because from what's in there. Uh, you have white sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, and seaweed and salt and kelp powder. So the price I think was $2.99. So very comparable to what you could get at like, a, like for me when I go to like an Asian grocery, this might even be cheaper. The mushroom ravioli. This is really good. I've gotten this many times. Palak paneer. This is new to me. It is the Trader Joe's egg frittata. I have the cauliflower gnocchi again. I had bought the, what did I buy last time? Was it the potato? 
No. Oh my god, I can't remember. I'll try to like put it up on the screen. I got a different gnocchi last time and I liked it, but I didn't love it because there's something... I wasn't wild about the flavor. This one is still really, really good. Uh, when I had shared the acai bowls from Costco, so many of you guys mentioned the Trader Joe's one, so I'm gonna try this one. I have yet to try the one that's Costco in store, like in their kind of cafeteria area. I will absolutely try it. I always see it, but I'm always there like in between work hours, so I can't really stop. I'm not like, it's not my own time, you know? And a paneer tikka masala. Lastly is these peanut butter blondies. Holy mother, these are so good. So good. So, oh my god, okay. This is gonna be embarrassing. Although I have had these for over a week and I have two at a time, so the fact that we're almost out makes complete sense. <laughs> In fact, I like had to make a conscious effort to be like, do not eat them so you can show everybody. So the bottom is like a brownie texture, but it's a peanut butter brownie insanely delicious then you have a little bit of strawberry like flavoring and then on top is like this very crispy peanut butter like flaky stuff and on top you have like little like i don't know how to describe it like sprinkles of peanut butter-ness they're just amazing they barely require like if you take them out of the freezer you only need to give them about a minute before you can bite into them they're so good if you love peanut butter and strawberry, you will, I can't recommend these enough. So good. Okay, I recently picked up these two quads from Tom Ford. This is the Noir Fumé, and this is Mink Mirage. So I had $65 of like rewards points at Nordstrom. So I was like, what do I want to try? And these quads, seriously, the price just keeps going up higher and higher and higher. I think when they were first released, were they like 70, 72, 75? Now they're like 88. And um, on Selfridges, you can get them for 74, I think. But man, okay, anyway. So this is, I guess, supposed to replace Coco Mirage. If I had to choose, I would still choose the color combination and finishes of the Coco Mirage. This is still very pretty. I'm, this is what I'm considering keeping. And then this Noir Fumé, I really was excited for this. I'm like, these are colors I like. I thought this was more of like a reddy brown. This kind of has like an olivey tone to it. And I can never ever fault Tom Ford brow like colors. Like on my skin tone, they always look amazing. And I like his formulas in general. But this one I'm returning because when I apply this and this, they end up being way lighter than I want. This, which I thought looks so olivey, and even when I swatch it on my hand, it has a really beautiful olivey undertone, but on the lids, it just looks like taupe, like, like nothing on my lids, and very, very cool tone, which I understood it was gonna be cool tone, but I thought I could do like this really beautiful, like smoky eye, and while it is very smoky, I feel like the look I can accomplish with this is just not outstanding enough, so it's, can't keep it for that price, right? Okay, I'm gonna get you some swatches. Okay, so on top you have Noir Fumé. It is very pretty, but when you see and I move and the light hits it, on me, I lose that like kind of bronze olive and it goes straight to that color, which is very taupe and light. It looks like there's nothing on my lids, like shimmer, just shimmer. So while it's pretty, I don't think I can keep it, even though I really wanted to love it so much. And then underneath you have Coco, no, Mink Mirage. And again, very pretty, formula is excellent. The brow bone highlights on Tom Ford always just blend in so beautifully on me. But again, the look I create, every look I create is really beautiful. But I, I only end up getting about three different looks, which is fine. I don't have huge expectations for variety when it comes to a quad. But for the price, it's like the price, guys. Like, do I keep it? Even though I had $65 off, I'm just like, I don't know. 